everyone, it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today we are making the Woodbury Castle Shawl. It is a very quick and easy shawl to make and yes, admittedly, you do have to start with the longest row but after that every row is going to be shorter. Now I wear it wrapped around me and I attach it with a button at the back and it is really really easy to wear like that. The shawl is longer than my fingertip to fingertip measurement as you can see here. In fact it's nearly two meters or 78 inches and from shoulder to tip it's 84 centimeters or 33 inches I used four balls of Starcraft special decay copper and I used a five and a half hook now those four balls will allow you to put tassels on your shawl if you wanted those. Let's get started, shall we? So what do you need? I've got my four balls of Starcraft Special Decay Copper. That will be enough to also do tassels on the shawl. And as you can see, the shawl is finished in such a way that there are arches on the side. I will tell you later on how to do those. Um, and that will be the perfect locations for you to put your tassels on. So I might still put them on. I'm not sure. Then I also have a toggle on there so I can close up the shawl so it stays around my body. And this is one of the things that I found in my collection of weird and wonderful things. <laughs> um, and I thought it was a perfect one for this. Now, obviously, you can choose whatever you want, but you need to make sure it goes through one of the holes that we are going to create in the shawl. So I have here just some plain toggles, which would have worked as well. And you could also use a round button, a, a bit bigger than usual, you know, sort of like this, that would go through one of those holes as well. So I've got my darning needle, um, a good thick one for sewing in the ends, which only is, you know, when you change a ball and for also sewing on your button. And I am using a five and a half hook. Now, the reason why I'm using this is because I want a nice lacy finish to my shawl. So the yarn requires a four. I normally use a three and a half, so I've gone up two sizes. So if you use a four normally for this yarn, then you will have to go up to a six. OK, so two full sizes bigger than what you usually use. Now, the way I've set up for making this shawl is so it is made to your measurements. So you might need your uh, measuring stick. Uh, but the way we are going to do it is that you are going to work out what is your fingertip to fingertip measurement. And that way you know how wide, how long the f to make the first row. And then from there on we make our rows shorter and shorter. So to get started, we are going to take our yarn, find the beginning. And we're going to make a slip knot. You insert your hook and you're going to start chaining. Now you're going to chain to about five centimeters under your fingertip to fingertip measurement. Okay, so measure how long it is from outstretched arms, obviously, from your one fingertip all the way over your shoulders to the other. If you're making this shawl for someone else, finding out how tall they are helps because that's about the fingertip to fingertip measurement or ask them for their fingertip to fingertip measurement. So you're going to chain all the way until you have just about under that fingertip to fingertip measurement. 
Now, I am going to make a sample. Not only will that give you the, um, you know, the whole scarf as such that I can show you how to make it, but also it will fit in the viewfinder and you will be able to see the whole thing. OK, so I have here chained from fingertip to fingertip. OK, just under. Right now we are going to do an extra two chains. One, two. These two chains are going to be my first half double crochet coming out of the third chain. So from the fourth chain, you are going to do a half double crochets into the back bump. Carefully pick it up. There we go. Layla is playing behind me, so that's the noise you can probably hear. There we go. OK, you do a half double crochet. Right, so I've done in the last stitch, I've done my two chains. Then the next stitch, I've done my half double crochet. And yes, this is going to be a very long and tedious row to do, but it's necessary. It will give our look and it's not that easy to pick up the back bump. You sort of have to get into a habit of using your finger to help slide that back bump over your hook. And also I am turning my hook slightly the other way to get into it. And see, this is easier already. Now let me show you exactly what the back bump is. OK, so here we have the two V's of the front. Can you see those? There's two V's there, there. And then at the back here, you can see those little bumps, that one, that one, that one, that one. And those are the ones that we are going to be picking up. OK. So yarn over and go under that back bump. See again, yeah, help it along. Now, I know, like I said, it is going to be a long row, but it's going to be so worth it because look, we have a lovely edge to our shawl here and here as well. I still have my V's on my shawl, which makes it a lovely finish. And, you know, while you are doing that, you might just want to, you know, do a bit of a mindful crocheting, like thinking how lovely the colour is. You might want to put a favourite film on. Or play with your cat, as you can hear, Layla's <laughs> pulling on my T-shirt for attention. OK, so you're going to have to do this all along your chain, but you're going to have to keep an eye on your chain. Once you are putting stitches on your chain, it's going to stretch. So even though you had a measurement of just below fingertip to fingertip it is now going to get longer and the end measurement that we need is going to be about 10 centimeters past your fingertip on each side okay so it needs to be longer than your outstretched arms outstretched with fingertips by 10 centimeters on each side my shawl here is about two meters wide so when you reach nearly that measurement with your half double crochets on your chain. So when you're about a meter 90, when you're about five, six centimeters over each fingertip to fingertip, come back to me and I will tell you what to do. OK, so I have made it to about 20 centimeters past my fingertip to fingertip measurement. So starting here over my shoulders, other arm. 20 centimeters longer okay so now we are going to count the multiple because of course we have a multiple in this shawl and we need to take that into account uh, the multiple is eight plus one so we are going to count go back to the beginning of your line here count this as your one OK, so you can forget about the plus one and then we are going to start counting in eights. So this is the one, 
two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. So you will be doing this for a lot longer, of course, because your line is much longer, okay? Two, four, six, seven, okay? So I know I need to do one more here. Let me get a hold of it again. One more. So you'll have to, at the end, you'll have to make up your eight or take off the last few ones if you haven't got anything to work with anymore, okay? So that will be the end then, right? So I've got my eight here. Right, so that's the end. So now I've got these chains here. They are too much, right? So basically, I am just going to undo this. I'm just going to try and unravel them. There we go, that will work. And just carefully unravel those last few stitches. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to worry about it. This is what happens when you're doing something to measure, okay? Uh, we are measuring it to our body. We need a particular multiple, so that's what's going to happen. So we last one here. Look, I'm just going to pull it closed. There we go, right? And you can't tell that we've done that, obviously, and we'll just weave in this end when we're finished, okay? So... Now we've got our multiple of eight plus one, and this should be about 20 centimeters longer than your fingertip to fingertip measurement. And, you know, I've been saying 10 centimeters on each side, so, you know, 20 centimeters longer. So mine, as I said, was about two meters. Now we are going to start our repeat. So you're going to chain one, turn, and in the first one you're going to do a single crochet. Then you are going to skip three stitches, one, two, three. In the fourth one here you are going to do five times treble chain one. Now a treble is yarn over twice so skip one two three in the fourth one insert pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two chain one so you're going to repeat that five times yarn over twice into the same stitch insert Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, chain one. Okay, so this is what I'm calling the castle shell. <laughs> yarn over twice, into the same stitch, chain one, and you continue doing your treble, chain one, until you have one, two, three, four, and another one, five, in that same stitch chain one and that's the end of your castle shell then you skip one two three chains and you do a single crochet in the fourth one okay so that's our first shell done you are now going to do the same thing until the end of your line basically so castle shells made up of five treble chain one into the fourth stitch. When you have finished the shell, you do a single crochet into the fourth stitch. So one, two, three, four, five. I've done my chain. So one, two, three and single crochet here. Okay, so there we are. Same thing again, skip three into the fourth, your treble, chain one, treble, chain one, treble, chain one, 
treble, chain one and treble, chain one. One, two, three, into the fourth. Single crochet. Okay. Last one. Have I got enough? Yes, I have. <laughs> that is always very, very scary. That moment where you realise, have I got enough stitches for that last shell? Now, if you haven't, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, if you haven't, you might have miscounted somewhere or whatever. I would just skip to and or skip to here. It does not matter. You're not going to see that in the end, okay? Um, it won't matter even towards the end as well, you know, for the rest of the shawl, it doesn't matter. So one, two, three, and then here in that turning chain, I go in and I do a single crochet. There we go, okay? So this is our first row done. Now, obviously, as I said, I am doing a sample, so you can see it all. Yours will be much, much longer, okay? Yours will keep going on and on and on. Now, the reason why I'm also doing a sample is so that you can see how it is going to reduce as well. So each row, you will have one shell less to do. So this first row, just like your row that you've just done here with the half double crochets, will take quite a long time. But no other row will take the same amount. It will always get shorter. So this is our first row done. Next row. Now we are going to start the repeat. Okay, so we are going to do three chains. One, two, three. You turn. And we just need to look at the shells for a moment. So this here is the middle treble. Then on either side, you've got a chain space. And then on either side of those, you've got a chain space. These two locations here, these chain spaces, and this top of the treble is what we are going to use as our anchor points throughout the shawl, okay? So basically you're skipping here into this chain space there. So you've chained three, you're going to skip this here into the second chain space. Chain three. Skip this chain space on top of the treble. Single crochet. Okay, chain three. Skip a chain space into the next one. So we've done the first shell. Now we're going to go to the next shell. So you're going to chain three. You're going to skip this here, this one here, and into that same location as I indicated before, the second chain space there. See? One, two, three, again, Find the top treble or the treble, the middle treble, and do your single crochet there. One, two, three, skip a chain space into that location there. And once you've got an eye for those locations, which you will have really quickly, it's just, no, not there, yeah, into the treble, into the top of the treble. So you pick up the Vs here. And here you go round the chain space and here as well. It's so easy to do because you'll recognize the locations and that's where you need to be. Okay, so you get to your last shell. And of course, there you're going to do your chain three. You find your top location here on top of that treble. But then there's no point in going here. OK, there's no point in going that way because there's nothing there for you. So this is the end of that row. This is the end of the archers row. Now we're going to do our turn. 
So turn, there's no need to chain or anything, you turn. And now we're doing shells again. So this is the second row of our repeat. So first we do the chains, then we are going to do the castle shells again. And once again, you do five times a treble and a chain, but this time you do them around that chain three space that you created with your arches. Well, before we were obviously skipping stitches, now all you need to do is put your shells of five trebles, chain one, into those chain three spaces from the row below. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Okay. Then you go and you look for that single crochet in the middle that you put on top of that middle treble. Insert into that stitch as normal and you do a single crochet. Same thing again. You go and do your castle shell into the chain three of the arch in the row below. And chain one, there we go, okay. And then again, do that single crochet here, single crochet. Now we don't start our shell with a chain because I found that it stretches anyway, that first stitch that you do there. See, look, that always used to happen. So there's no point in doing an extra one there because you've got the, the height already there anyway. So that's three, four, and five. And a chain one, there we go. Okay, and then of course you're here, you're on that middle one again to do your single crochet. And there's no point in going any further, obviously. So, look, can you see that? We have already lost a shell. So in the beginning we had four, now we have three. You will have however many you had, <laughs> a lot more, obviously, and you will have one less. Okay, so... Here, again, this is the time to turn round, do your three chains, one, two, three, find that location, the second chain space, one, two, three chains, on top of the treble, the middle treble, a single crochet, one, two, three, second chain space, one, two, three, go over to the next shell for the second chain space, one, two, three, on top of the middle treble, single crochet, one, two, three, second chain space, one, two, three, second chain space on the next shell, one, two, three, middle of the shell, and there we go, finish the row. So when you are at this point, obviously, you're going to be doing really, really short rows. But of course, like I said, your rows are going to be much longer. But this is a way for me to show you how to do it really, really well. So now we're ready to start doing the shells again. So turn round, yarn over twice, and do your five trebles, chain one, into the three chain spaces that you have created in the previous row. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, yeah, that's it. Attach on the single crochet and off you go again with your next shell. And because the hook is too big for the yarn, it's going to work really loosely, but you will see it does work out. There we go, see? Three, 
and four and the last one here and to be honest you know it's really easy because obviously there's not all that much looking for where you're going to put your shells and here we go look at that so now i've done two and of course this time look at this we are already ready for doing our arches again so one two three in the locations as you should know them by now on top of the treble the middle one three into that second one there one two three so if you in the beginning just take some time to look at that shell and find which are the exact locations that will help you just to find them easily when you are working your shawl there we go i've already finished this row of course because there was not much left for me to do turn and yeah I'm doing my last shell so when you get to this point here you will have done I think I did about 36 37 rows so you know there is a lot more work obviously than what I am showing you here with my little sample but I did that too. yeah fine um, I did I made the shawl very quickly indeed because it was such a lovely easy to remember pattern you know just the two rows i mean it's so easy okay so now i have finished my shawl but as you can see on this side we have created those little arches because we needed those to move away again to start creating those arches but on this side we didn't because of the way it worked out so now is the time to come back and to do those and actually we will finish at the same side as your starting end okay so let me just show you so you turn your work and you start doing your arches so chain three find those same locations again as before chain three uh, on top here yeah chain three in that same location here there we go chain three two three <laughs> i'm chaining two there um, and then here of course it gets a little bit more complicated because we have here is the location on top and that's where we should be doing that arch so you're either going to go in there but i was worried it might stretch so i just went into here so you should be about in this location should be doing a single crochet to attach your arch and i've just done it like that again chain three same location here you know that second chain space one two three again here where they meet i just went around it one two three in the middle one two three and again your end will be much longer but it will be a quick thing to do and obviously it will make sure that your shawl is symmetrical and then here i just attached it to there sort of to the end there and then all you need to do is sew in your ends now mine is a little bit my big one didn't do this but um you know as long as you can stretch it and it's straight it should be fine okay so let me just cut off the yarn here there we go so all you need to do is sew these two ends in obviously you're going to need to start a couple of balls in there i think and there is a clear sort of front and back to this shawl because all your shells will be made in the same direction so that's quite nice so this is the uh, front this is the back and then all you'll have to do is attach a button to your side using a needle and i just use the same uh, thread and you go in sort of a little bit in like so And then I went through there and I just attached it to any sort of 
what I thought would be convenient or what I thought would hold. There we go. So we come back through the hole. I mean, you don't have to put a button on, but, you know, very often uh, triangular shawls, they don't stay on. You're constantly trying to, you know, put them back onto your shoulders. So I thought this would be a solution for this type of shawl anyway. Um, you know, just to, there we go. Okay. So then again, sew in your ends here so they disappear and your short will be finished. Right, okay, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you will make this shawl. Do please let me know if you've made it, let me see it, post a picture of it in the Facebook group. I am waiting to see yours. <laughs> thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Before you go, please like and share this video. Ring the bell so you're notified of new videos. Join our community on Facebook and here are some more videos you might find interesting. Thank you so very much for watching and come back soon. Bye!